Every year on my Future Doc program, there are always a handful of incredible students who applied the year before, didn't do particularly well in the UCAT, and then joined us and improved their score by an incredible 500 points, and that made the difference for them getting in. So every year, I'm really interested and study those students really carefully to know what they change from one year to the next to improve their score so drastically. So I've got notes here from one of my students, Abith, from last year, who, fair enough, didn't want to make a video, which is understandable, but he he did very kindly leave me some notes as to how he improved his score from 2,630 to an outstanding 3,080. So what I'm going to do here is read you some of his tips, tell you his most important things that he thinks made the biggest impact on his score. At the end, I'm going to show you where you can get more tips like this. I'm going to give you a gift that you can get for free, which actually is going to be a session included as well that's going to come up in a couple of weeks time. So you can see the description below for where you can sign up to that. First tip is around allowing more time to practice. A lot of people underestimate the UCAT and don't realize just how much time you should allocate to it. So he said he only gave himself three weeks before, whereas this time he gave himself six weeks, starting with an hour a day in the first week and gradually increasing the amount he practiced every day until he was doing about four hours a day. The second mistake that he said he made the first time was getting too bogged down and worrying about the scores. Actually, what he focused on the second time round was to look at the areas that he was getting wrong and just simply try and improve those each time rather than getting himself panicked about how high he was scoring and that helped him stay more relaxed and by being more relaxed he generally just performed better because you always perform better when you are more chilled out and focused rather than being really stressed and can't really concentrate on what you're supposed to be doing. The third change that he made that made a massive difference was how he spread out the mocks. So in the first two weeks he said he was doing two mocks a week and then after in the third and fourth week he was doing about between three and four mocks a week and then finally in his last two weeks he was making sure he did a mock a day. He says in capital letters, this is so important because it gets you used to the exam conditions and actually really well drilled to when it comes to the big day, you're just so used to just doing another mock exam under the pressure. The next point he makes is focus on your weaknesses, but not too much. He said it took me a long time to realize that VR was my worst section. So he tried to focus on it to improve it, but it still never got up to the level that the others were. And this is important because when you focus your attention on something, you've got to think of the big picture of what you're trying to do. If you're applying to a university where the VR is important, like Nottingham, where it counts double, this is worth spending time on. However, if you are applying to King's College London or somewhere like Newcastle, where you just need the highest score possible, you've got to think how if spending two hours on the VR is going to help improve you by 10 points, whereas spending two hours on the QR is going to improve you by 30 points, then it's probably a better time investment to do the latter if that is what you're aiming for. The next point he makes is about using a variety of resources. So some particular resources are better for certain sections. So one particular one is better for VR, whereas another one's better for SJT. Another one might be better for decision making. So this is actually what we're going to discuss in the talk that I'm referring to, where we'll tell you all of the different resources and which one is best to use that is more similar to the real thing for each section. The next point he makes is to ration your UCAT mocks wisely. There are only four official UCAT mocks that are available on the website. And they, of course, by the nature of them being the UCAT official mocks are the closest thing to the real thing. So make sure you use them wisely. I would recommend saving at least two of them for that final week of intense mock prep so that you get most used to those in the run up to the real exam. So the final of these general tips before we'll go into individual sections and his best tips for each is that on the day before it is so important to just chill out and get yourself in the right mindset. It's a skills based test and I tell you here all of the skills that you need to know and the best strategies in this playlist. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to perform under pressure. So the best way to be able to do that is to keep yourself relaxed. That's why he says the day before he did nothing but chill out, just get himself well rested and prepared to do the sprint that is the UCAT on the following day. So the next thing he goes on to talk about is the individual sections and two or three points for each that helped him improve his score. He starts with abstract reasoning. He says the most important thing is to have a strategy that you stick to. As you go on, the patterns become subconsciously a lot more easy to spot. Doing something like the Future Doc online course or the one-on-one -on -one training that he got through the program really helped him have a set way that he analyzes the pattern 
patterns to make sure that over time it's just inherent in his way to analyze them and he just is able to do it subconsciously without thinking. He says that AR is one of those that it's hardest to start with but you see the most progress which is what I always talk about in my course. He says to do a pattern book so basically every time you see a new pattern jot it down somewhere so that you've got a list of all the patterns that you can possibly have and that helps you understand exactly what it could be when you see a new pattern. This is exactly something that I talk about in the online course and actually I provide a list of all those things as part of it. His final tip that this time helped him get a 3000 plus score was to actually be ruthless with the timings of the questions. He says give yourself 30 seconds to try and work out the pattern, 45 seconds at an absolute push and if you haven't got it by that time you just need to skip flag and move on. So for quantitative reasoning, the main things that he did differently or just more intensely this second time around were that he made sure he really learned the formulas and knew them well, practiced them well so that he was really fluent at the maths and also got really good at using the calculator, particularly using the keyboard and the shortcuts to get that really quickly. And he said that helped improve his time so much and his speed to make him get through the questions a lot quicker. The thing that he learned from the future doc teaching was to recognize impossible questions and know when to move on from them and be ruthless with that. That's really important because what you've got to understand is that not every question is workoutable in the time that's allocated. They are designed as traps to help bog you down so that you don't get through the questions. And it's important to be able to recognize those quickly so that you know that you can flag them, skip them, move on, make sure you just at least complete the section and then come back to those questions at the end. The biggest thing is that people don't finish the questions. Getting 80% right, but getting through 100% of the questions is a lot better than getting 90%, but only getting through 80% of the questions. So that's a lower score overall. It's really important to get your head around that fact, just to instill how ruthless you need to be at the skill of going through the UCAT test. When it comes to the decision-making, he really only has one tip, which is to learn the six common question types that come up in decision-making and to just know them well. Actually, in this playlist here, I discuss all the possible six type of decision-making questions that come up. And then it's just a shortened version of my online course for exactly how to tackle them quickly. So maybe check out that playlist if you wanna know all the possible question types and the best strategies for them. But he essentially says that they cycle through in a very continuous order. There's usually a repeated order that he's noticed as a pattern throughout the decision-making section. And they always follow that cycle of the question orders. So just be aware of that and you can know what's coming and you can anticipate the questions that are coming up next after that. For verbal reasoning, he actually managed to improve his score quite a lot. He took it from 560 to 650, which is actually really good because the average for verbal reasoning is really low. So here he says, just be ruthless with the targeted read. So again, if you wanna check out this playlist, we talk about how to do the scanning technique here, which is really fast and the most accurate. He also says, be ruthless with your time again. This is the one where people run out of time most. And actually it's the hardest one because you want to just read a little bit more to make sure that you write, but it's the one where people fail the most on because they're just so slow when getting through to the end of all the questions. The only thing that he changed second time around in the VR was if the passage was small or medium, he said he would actually just skim it first just to get the gist of what's going on rather than do the targeted read. So if it's a small one, just make a decision. If it's large, then I would just maybe not worry about it so much, but if it is small and manageable, just quickly skim it so that you know that you can get a better gist of what's going on rather than doing the targeted read in that particular circumstance. And finally, we have the situational judgment where he got a band one. I'm just gonna read word for word what he said here. I would say reading GMC guidelines and doing a lot of questions is the best way to go about this section. The future doc videos were very helpful as they went through most of the scenarios I got in the exam. I would always aim to differentiate between whether a response was appropriate, inappropriate, or important, unimportant before deciding whether it was very or not so much. So basically, as we say in this playlist, list here where I talk about SJT. First decide whether it's top half or bottom half and then distinguish between the two top halves or the two bottom ones. He then says make sure that you're aware of the definitions of each of the answer options too. Most of the time you will have time left at the end of this section so flagging is very important when you are doing the questions in the extra time you have at the end you can focus on these questions. So basically if you're unsure flag those and then you can come back and have a bit more thinking time once you finish this section because it is probably the only one that you'll get through. He signs off at the end by saying, good luck guys. So as I said, if you look in the description below, you can get these notes and I will give you a PDF copy of them. But also in a couple of weeks time, we're going to host a live session where we get 
all the people who went through FutureDoc last year and got a 3000 plus score and have a session where they talk about their specific tips for what they did, you'll notice that there are similar recurring patterns between each of the students and there are commonalities between what they did that got them a 3000 plus score. So I urge you to come along, have a listen to what they've got to say, come and ask them some of your own questions as to anything that you're unclear about that you want to hear from them. If you're watching this after the date of the live session, don't worry, you can still sign up below and I'll send you the recording of that session so that you can review it at your own leisure. Otherwise, I'd recommend that you check out this best strategies playlist that kind of gives you all the greatest hits of the most important things you need to know to make sure you score highly in the UCAT. Or if you want to get some one-on-one -on -one help, check out this video here where we've helped plenty of students now in the hundreds of students get really high scores in their UCAT and get them on their way to securing a place at their first choice medical school. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.